Hello students, welcome to Fatigue Analysis. I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're gonna to do our last example for multi-axial fatigue loading. Now this example, example three, is a continuation of our previous example, example two. So if you haven't seen the example two video, uh, go and watch that video, click on the playlist or click uh, there, there should be a little uh, window appearing right now on the screen. Click on that and watch example two first. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start example three. Uh, in example three, we're asked to recalculate uh, the, the conditions from example two. So recalculate the uh, factors of safety for yielding and fatigue failure but assuming the new loading conditions below, where the torque ranges from 20 to 160 newtons times meters, and where the bending moment is now a constant value of 150 newtons times meters. So now we have this torque that's not fully reversed, where we're gonna have a mean torque, and where the, the bending, uh, uh, the, the, the normal bending uh, load is going to be a constant value. It's static. So with these changes, let's update our, our knowns. We're now going to say that we have a, a, a torque max of 160 newtons times meters, a torque minimum of 20 newtons times meters, a, a moment amplitude of zero, because there is no amplitude, but a, a mean bending moment of 150 newtons times meters because it's a static value. A static loading case is, is we can describe as a mean uh, of load. So in our solution, we will reuse the previous calculations that we made in example two, but with some modifications. Uh, one of the main modifications is in the way that we calculate the torque and the bending uh, moment uh, amplitudes and their mean values. We must express torque and bending moment in terms of amplitude and mean. So for the torque amplitude, we'll define that using our, our known equation for amplitudes, where the amplitude is the range, so T max minus T min, divided by two. So our torque amplitude is 70 newtons times meters. And then we'll calculate the torque mean value where the mean is the average of the max and min. So T max plus T min divided by two. So our mean torque is 90 newtons times meters. For our moment amplitude, it's equal to zero. And for our, our mean moment, 150 newtons times meters. The next step is for us to calculate what the stress amplitude and mean stress would be uh, from the torque and the, uh, the bending moment. So what we'll do, and, and, and furthermore, those values at the stress concentration. So remember, we have a stress concentration from example two. So we'll go ahead and find the normal and shear uh, stress amplitudes and mean stresses using the following equations. Where the torque amplitude is equal to the fatigue uh, stress concentration factor for shear times the equation for, for finding the shear stress. And inside of this shear stress equation, we're gonna use the torque amplitude so that we can get a shear stress amplitude out. We find the shear stress amplitude is equal to 27.687 megapascal. We'll do something similar to find the mean torque where we have that fatigue stress concentration factor in shear, and we have the shear stress equation where we're using the mean torque so that our mean shear stress is equal to 35.597 megapascal. Now let's uh, do the calculation for the normal stresses. So we wanna get the normal stress amplitude. We'll multiply the fatigue stress concentration factor Kf times the normal stress equation. And inside of that, we're going to use the uh, amplitude of our moment, which we know is zero. So our, so our normal stress amplitude is zero. And then again, 
Similarly, for the mean stress, uh, we'll use the, uh, the mean moment, and we find that that mean stress is equal to about 80 megapascal. Now we have the, uh, the normal and shear stress amplitudes and the normal and shear mean stresses. We, we now are going to use these and plug them in to von Mises equivalent stress so that we can get single scalar values that represent uh, the stress amplitude and the mean stress. In von Mises equation, we see that we have the full state of stress. What we're going to do is modify it. We're going to say that uh, the equivalent stress amplitude is going to be equal to uh, a, a function of our uh, normal stress amplitude and our shear stress amplitude. For the normal stress, we're going to put it on the x-axis, and the shear stress, we're going to put that on tau xy. All right? We find that our uh, von Mises stress amplitude is equal to 44.383 megapascal. We'll do this process again for to find a von Mises mean stress, where, again, we'll put the normal means on the x and the, and the shear mean on the, on the tau xy, and we calculate that the von Mises mean stress is 93.486 megapascal. Now we can jump into finding and checking those factors of safety. We'll be using modified Goodman, where the stress amplitude divided by the modified endurance limit plus the mean stress divided by the ultimate tensile strength should be equal to one. If we want to add the factor of safety, we'll take that one and divide it by n, and then we can rearrange and solve for n. For yielding, our equations can rearrange and simplify as follows, where the safety factor for yielding is one divided by the von Mises amplitude over the yield strength plus the von Mises mean stress over the yield strength, giving us 2.485. Since n is greater than 1, yielding will not occur for this problem. And let's note here that for the yielding case, we replace SE and SU with SY. Now let's do for the fatigue failure case. This is where we would use the, the modified Goodman equation as is. We rearrange and solve to get this following form. And when we plug in our values... The, the safety factor for, for fatigue is 2.018. Since it is greater than 1, that means fatigue failure will not occur. That means that we have a case of infinite life. So uh, that is the conclusion of this example. You can see that in this example it's a little bit different. Because we don't have fully reverse loading, and because the loading case between tension, I mean, between the torque and the bending moment is not the same. One is static and one is in fatigue. When we calculate our stresses, we have to be careful. And, and, and in the process, we, we actually end up finding a von Mises mean stress that we then need to plug in to modify Goodman. Uh, overall, if we take a systematic approach and take our time thinking through the problem, and of course, if we use MathCAD, we can very quickly correct our mistakes and get to the correct final answer. All right, so this is uh, our last example for uh, multi-axial fatigue loading. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, hit me in the comments, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video.